All right, let's do a quick review. Ready? This is information you have to have. And this Bible study is very good about relieving guilt and shame, which is where I'm, what I'm after. Okay? But you need to know exactly what God's word says, not what somebody told you it said. So let's have a quick review. We remember from last week, we defined these terms from the New Testament. And um, showing the difference in particular between these, the top two, fornication and the rest of the sins here. Okay? And then we went on to find fornication. And that's the catch-all term for er any kind and every kind of sexual sin. And then we had a little pop quiz there. We'll skip that. And then I went on to illustrate fornication or pornea which is any kind of sexual sin, homosexuality, heterosexuality, bestiality, pedophilia, anything you name, is sexual sin, which is pornea, or fornication. And then we went through all the different kinds of sexual sins briefly. Then we went through the uh, scriptures that outlined sexual perversion, which was in Leviticus 18, as you remember, and chapter 20. Remember that? And then we went through a couple other scriptures illustrating other sexual perversions. The same Hebrew words were used for homosexuality that were used for bestiality. And uh, there was another scripture on bestiality. Then we went through homosexuality and lesbian. Then we went through the cause of homosexuality, what the root cause of it is. There's multiple causes of it. And uh, that's, again, falling into the pornea. Here are the guys in Pompeii uh, who are incinerated at the orgy. Uh, I'm sexy and I know it. No, not during a volcano, you're not. They were instantly killed. But we also illustrated that Pompeii was almost exactly like Las Vegas. And it was almost laid out the same. It was all full of brothels. And then we went through... Uh, some other sexual sins, which was in Romans chapter 1. Remember, we went through Romans 1 and uh, went through sexuality in God's eyes in the Greek text, illustrating the cause of homosexuality and lesbianism, lust, so on, and uh, homosexuality again, Romans chapter 1. Reprobate minds, we went over that last week. What is a reprobate mind? And we went through the causes of homosexuality, the root causes of it. There were several of them. We outlined those. And the number one cause of it is unclean spirits. Sexual perversion demons are the hidden monsters behind all forms of sexual perversion. The unclean spirits are the we're in the Wizard of Oz. You ever seen the Wizard of Oz? No? Well, anyways, this movie, it came out in the 50s, 40s. 39? Uh, 39? 39, thank you. Came out in 39. Same year as Gone with the Wind? Yeah. yeah, 39. Great movie. At the end of the movie, Dorothy is standing in front of Oz, the wizard, and he's on this giant screen up there, unbelievable, scary. And uh, she brings him the stick, the, wi the uh, broomstick of the uh, Wicked Witch of the West, just like he told her to. And she, she said, you bring me that broomstick, you can go home. And she, she brought it to him, he says, well, come back tomorrow. <laughs> well, Dorothy was uh, the original women's liver. She got mad. She said, wait a minute, you you're the Wizard of Oz. You gave me your word. You did this and that. Uh, almost like a marriage break up there. So he says, silence, fools, and you know, all this other wizard stuff. Well, while this is going on, her little dog, she had a shishu or a terrier or something. And this thing runs over way over there and pulls this curtain back. And there's an old man standing there running this equipment. It was the Wizard of Oz equipment. You can get them on eBay. 
And it goes like that. And even the lion, who had no guts at all, got kind of bold and walked up to this guy. Well, anyway, come to find out, the real culprit was the guy behind the curtain. There was no Wizard of Oz. Okay? And there is no such thing as this stuff. It's all the man behind the curtain. It's the devil. He's standing behind there running this fake, phony Oz thing. You know, I had two people this week that came in for counseling who were sexual perverts. And one of the two understood what I was explaining to them, that those thoughts and those emotions were not theirs. The other one didn't get it. Only one got healed. Listen, if you understand that these thoughts and these urges, these emotions, this evil is not you, that some, it's another person living in your body, pushing you to do things and think things and say things that you don't want to do, okay? You can get healed. But if you think it's you, that's you, you can't get healed. Uh, the seminar on the 21st will go into this in detail, but they're not mentally ill. Well, the doctor said I was mentally ill. Your doctor's ignorant. Those aren't your thoughts. I'm bipolar. No, you're not. I'm schizophrenic. No, you're not. It's them talking in your mind. You think it's your thoughts. It's not. You think it's your lust, it's not. They're pushing you to feel things you don't want to feel. They're pushing you to do things you don't want to do. And if you're ministering that person, if you can't get them to see that bifurcation, they'll never get healed. If you think it's you, we're stuck. What's the person's sin then? Listening to them. Jesus said, you cannot serve two masters. You must hate one of them. Well, if you're not going to hate the devil, he's going to run you into the ground, and you're going to be his servant. Romans chapter 2. You serve. You're the slave to the master you serve, Paul said. So if you keep hearing negative thoughts in your head, and you go, oh, yeah, that's me, you're cooked. Oh, I'm attracted to third graders. I want sex with them. No, they don't. It's them doing it. Why do you think pedophilia is incurable? They don't do deliverance in prison. Duh. Stupid. You go to prison to pick up demons, not get reformed. You come out sicker than when you went in. This mic working? Uh, well, let me get to something else you're not interested in. Then we went through this process here of how it's actually the spirits getting into the person in the womb, in childhood, causing these perversions during puberty. Then we went through this video here about child abuse. And then we went through your family tree. And we showed how these spirits get into your family tree. They work on down the family tree. And you notice you'll have similar symptomatology running through the tree. You'll see a bunch of drunks or addicts in your family, a bunch of criminals, a bunch of women with breast cancer. Bunch of whole bunch of divorces running amok, bunch of incest in your family. And you notice this kind of pattern skipping down through the tree. And you're going, wait a minute, this is weird. It's because these spirits get in here, then they move down and picking off the rest of the family members. When this one dies, the spirits stay in the same family and they go get another family member. So the same type of spirit, cancer demon. Infects this one. Now they got cancer. That's why the doctors always say, anybody else in your family have cancer? Oh, yeah, my aunt, my... Oh, really? Well, they don't understand that there's a root cause of this. It's called the devil. Then we went through generational spirits, how they moved down through the family tree, crushing everyone. How come everybody's a drunk in my family? I just told you. How come everybody's a pervert? 
I just told you. Why is there so much insight? I just told you. The spirits get in here, they work their way down. Everybody's dead. Then we went through uh, a couple other things, which I'm going to skip real quick. Generational sin, we went through that. Started with King David. He had that family tree thing with lust. Remember that? His whole family got infected with lust demons. They were rapists and killers. David was a rapist and a killer. Hello? And the demon got in the family, rape and kill. Hmm. And then we went to Amnon, and then we went down to Absalom. Remember? He raped all the... He ended up dead. You know, everybody raped and dead. If you got a bunch of rapists in your family, death follows shortly thereafter. Rape and death or kissing cousins. Premature deaths always are in families that have lots of rapes. People die in weird car wrecks, strange illnesses. Okay, and then we went down to another son. He had perversions. It cost him his life. Solomon killed him. Then we went to the super, the king of super sex addictions. Who's that? This nut. The wisest man in history turned into be the dumbest and he went through his sexual addiction. What? Because lust is not intellectual. And every alcoholic knows being an alcoholic is wrong, and they don't want to be an alcoholic. See? If you ask every one of them, are you partying on and having a great time as a drunk? Isn't it wonderful? They all look at you like you're nuts. What, are you crazy? I don't want to drink anymore. It's not intellectual. Solomon had a huge IQ, but crushed morals. And Solomon had all kinds of wives and all kinds of concubines and so on. Then we went through Abraham. He brought in lying into the family. And then everybody else started these lying. Everybody started lying. So they, he lies. And then Isaac, he lies about his wife. And then... Jake, Jacob's lion, he's the super deceiver. And then uh, everybody lying and so on. And then we went through sexual addictions. Remember that? And then we uh, showed that uh, all this sexual activity in America was actually had a root, a beginning. And four people caused it all. These four people started what we have now in our society where everything is sexualized, even selling cereal and stuff. It's unbelievable. Everything has to have some type of sensuality feel to it to sell it. Not just the regular stuff. Beer and booze and cars, but almost everything now. Even the kids has some kind of a sensuality to it. And it all started with these researchers here. Remember? And then uh, Hugh Hefner. This guy here. He takes a handful of Viagra every day to keep up with the lust demons. Because when you get in your 80s, you know, unless you're massively infected with lust demons and have huge prescriptions, you just can't keep that up anymore. That's a community service comment. I didn't expect that to go over into a deep spiritual area. I just threw that in to help some people out. And then these two guys took it to another level of perversion. And then uh, these two guys brought it into the media. Sexuality, sensuality, sin. These were the basically the beginning or the pillars of evil in our society. Okay? Should I do a review or just skip it next, next, next time? Skip it? Do it again? Keep a review? Okay. I did, I'm not sure whether I should have done a review or not. Maybe you felt it was a waste of time. But anyway, that's kind of where we were last week. And now uh, we're going to go to here. These... Uh, curses come down through the family tree where you have a lot of perverts in them and it happens in the Bible. Okay? And we go to first, obviously King Solomon in 1 Kings chapter 11. Solomon had all these wives and all these concubines. When in fact anybody with half a brain knows that it's going to take everything you got really to handle one of these. <laughs> all right? You got 700. That's a red flag. 
You nuts. You're nuts. You know you're crazy. With concubines, that's pure recreation. That makes perfect sense. This, this makes no sense. Samson, Judges 14, Samson came to his father and mother, and he did what? Well, he fulfilled God's word. It's the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the, the pride of life. So he sees this woman who is not Jewish. They shouldn't have been over there anyway, looking around. See? That's the key to these lust spirits. They get, they get behind your eyeballs in your head, and they use your eyes as like scanners, you know? Did you ever see that movie Terminator? Well, he could just scan through you like that when he was... I don't know how they do it, but it's a scanning thing. Well, that's what lust demons do. You're a scanning women or men. You just scan them. You're checking them out. It's called check it out. <laughs> I used to have a massive lust demon in my head, and that's all I did, particularly at the mall. It used to kill me to go to the mall, particularly during the summer in this state. It drives you nuts because none of the women wear any clothes during the summer. You go to the mall, it's like, you know, you got kind of a whiplash thing when you go home. I had this lust thing in my eyes. I kept scanning everybody. I would scan everything. I'd start feet and go up. Everything interested me about a woman. What do they look like nude? What does their body look like? And this scanning thing going. I'm the only one, right? Yeah. All the guys are sitting here. See, next week's Bible study is on massive hypocrisy. I hope you'll all show up. But anyway, if you're a man, stop it. But Samson had this thing, this scanner. See, he had lust demons, and he sees this girl, go, and he tells his parents, go get her for me. Yeah. You know the story, right? They try to talk him out of it because they know this is trouble. Why can't you find somebody among, why do you have to go to an idol worshiper? Why do you have to go to this, in, a, in effect, a harlot, a whore type person? Why don't you, nope, can't do that. I've seen her. She looks great. She pleases me. Go get her for me. And what happened to him? Wow. Lost, he lost his life. Yeah, that happens a lot. Getting married to the wrong person. Nobody knows this but me here, but boy, I'll tell you what, ooh, I've had three, four, five wives, hey, and, I, and it was not good. It was a, very painful. Uh, why? Why was it painful? Well, basically, you know, they think you're funny initially, but after you get married, for some reason, my jokes weren't working anymore, and it kind of goes down from there. What is a soul tie? You ever heard that term? All right. Everybody explains it a different way, but I'll do it even differently for you tonight, okay? Here's what really is happening. If you meet someone and you're, the spirits in your body are very similar to the ones in their body, there's kind of a natural pull. These spirits pull you toward the person. It's a, it, almost an instantaneous, they, some people call it love at first sight. But you have this pulling toward that person, and you don't know why. It's weird. <laughs> I just feel comfortable around that. You know, I'm just, wow, she's hot. And it's kind of an instantaneous, you know, you've talked to him a couple minutes, and you feel like you've known him for, like, two years. See? And then, of course, you get, what? You, you think you fall in love. Then you get married. And, of course, the spirits then take over and cause nothing but havoc. So then, you know, fights break out, and he beats her up. And she leaves, and her friends tell her, hey, don't go back to him. He's this and that and that and this, and she goes back. Then a month or two later, boom, 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 she leaves. Then she goes back. Then she, why, is, why is she doing that? It's not intellectual. 
Okay, everybody sees it intellectually and they know that that relationship's not working. Okay, don't go back there. But this pull inside, they're pulling the person to their doom. They're doing it deliberately. It works with friendships too. You get this demonic soul tie with a friend and that person is causing you to do things you know that are not right, they're wrong, they're compromising or something. And you feel you want to get away, but something, you know, it's almost, you know, you're pulling. It's weird. I feel like going over there. I'm choreographing this to help you. What's happening is something's pulling you that you don't intellectually understand. Does that, does that help? It's not mental. Because once that soul tie is broken, the person looks back on that relationship going, how in God's name was I even around that person? What was I, you know, they're like stunned. But before they couldn't stay away from. I kind of call it the battered wife syndrome. Well, Solomon, Samson kept going back to her. And he would go back and he'd catch her lying. Please tell me where your power is. Oh. And then she would lie to him and he'd catch her. He'd go back. See? Why? Was he mentally retarded? No, he was a bright person. He was a judge of Israel, very smart. But he had a demonic soul tie pulling pulling you. See? In Israel, Jehovah wouldn't allow it. If you got divorced and you married that person, you could not get divorced and come back to that person. No, no, no. It's, it's these deep spirits. Okay? If your spirits in your body are quite a bit different than the other person's, you'll have an opposite effect. You know, like you'll meet somebody and you'll say, you know something, something about that person that gives me the creeps. Or I don't like that person. Why? I don't know. Do you know them? No. There's something, ooh. If you have a soul tie and you it's love at first sight, you bring them home to dinner. Your mother doesn't have that soul tie. She go, baby, don't don't marry him. Okay, he's he's no something about him that's not good. But she <laughs> is not listening. Oh boy. A few years later, she back home, mama. And now she brought two kids. They're living in the back room. Why? She had a pulling demonic soul. Couldn't break it. So it happens at work. You're working somewhere that's causing you to compromise your values. You know you shouldn't be there. And something's been telling you in your heart for years. You know what? I really need to get another job. I need to get out of here. But something's pulling you in there. It's a demonic soul tie. Once those are broken off, the person is free, and they can make rational decisions using God's word, their intelligence, their common sense, their conscience. Everything works fine. You don't have to, you know, have like five or six marriages. It doesn't have to go that way. Let's go to divorce American style quickly. In the United States, the statistical divorce rate is what? It's right around you know, 50, 51 percent, Christian or non-Christian. The actual divorce rate's about 35, 36, 37. If you factor in other issues like marriage counseling, remarriage, you know, reconciliations. It's down to about 36. The actual divorce rate is about 36% or thereabouts. Okay? But this is an exceptionally high number here. And the reason for that is socially obvious. 
you know, you need training to be a spouse. You don't need training to be born. You just fall out of the womb and there you are. Get married requires training and skill, uh, unfortunately, which I didn't have. And, oh boy, that one that cost me a lot of money. Uh, statistically, two-thirds of divorced lawyers currently, these are current statistics now, 50% related to what? Incredible. Pornography now is a main cause of people getting divorced in the United States. It was virtually nothing just 10 years ago. Here's another interesting statistic. Kids today are so perverted, it's unbelievable. When I was a kid, not my wildest dreams would I have. I'm a senior citizen, so I was, you know, I go a few years back there, but when I was a kid, nobody was hot for teacher. Nobody. There was not one kid in my school doing their teacher. If they were, they'd, they couldn't come to class. They'd be so busy signing autographs. A high, you're kidding? How'd you, what? You were doing what? We didn't even know what they were doing. I didn't kiss a girl when I was a junior in high school. And had a lot to do with acne, but the point I'm trying to make is <laughs> the point I'm trying to make is that children nowadays are maturing so fast, it's inconceivable what they know that I didn't know at the same age. And most of it's bad. Okay? I was in McDonald's the other day having a gourmet meal. And I looked across the booth there, there were three kids in the booth, and they all had these in their hands and they were all talking and doing that at the same time I don't know what they were doing but it was incredible they could hear each other and one would say something and the other one would respond see and they were boys which is unusual now women are genetically able to do that they can if you had like five women here and they were all talking at once they're all, they could all hear each other I can't do that if you get a bunch of guys together couple belches, one guy will talk, nobody says anything, then, then another one will chip in. If you have a bunch of gals there, and they know what they're saying, they heard the other person while those two were talking. Now, how does that work? I don't know, but kids now are able to do that at a very young age. And you can carry one of these things in your hand and pull up stuff on that phone there that years ago you had to sneak down to Grand Avenue wearing a mustache and a hat to go into the Owl bookstore so nobody could see you getting a, buying a magazine, porn magazine. Right. Now, I don't expect to get any amens on this portion of the, of the teaching, so if you don't hear any amens, don't just assume that I'm, t I'm a terrible teacher. But this stuff's embarrassing. Nowadays, it's poop, poop, and you're right in the Owl bookstore instantaneously, and you're 12 years old. Nobody, when I was a kid, had guns in grade school. Not one student brought a gun. Nobody had switchblades. Nothing, you know. I was one of the toughest kids in school in grade school. I threw a spit wad at a guy. I was like, God, Mike Smith is tough. Times have changed. And it's all changed, most of it, for the worse. It's all sin now. It's all evil. And this stuff here is training kids on adult sexuality and encouraging them to try it. The average age for losing your virginity now is down to 13 point something. When I was 13, I don't, wow, it wasn't even close. Not even close to that. Okay? All right, one in five rentals is poor. I'm going to skip this section. Uh, Internet, big business, and porn. Skip that. All right, what's the top ten reasons for divorce? Do you know? Oh, you do now. The number one reason is still what it always was. That one never changes. It's always somebody cheating on them. But now that has expanded exponentially. Okay? Every counselor 
every therapist, every person that counts. Like nobody can define what cheating is anymore. Okay, so there's because there's so many ways to cheat. For example, is a chat room cheating? Is porn cheating? Well, it depends on who you ask. So the way I handle it in my counseling practice is I, if it's wounding the other person, that's a red flag something has to stop. So let's say you've never met this gal, but you're nuts about her on the internet or you're a, you're a Facebook lovers or whatever it is. If that's hurting the other spouse and they're accepting it as cheating or adultery and they're crushed over it, then that's the way I take it. What is cheating? Wow, nobody knows anymore. It's expanded because of technology. But this is still the number one reason, of course, lack of communication. Uh, of course, money. Boredom. Religion. Boredom's moved up on the list. Why? There's, there's so many exciting uh, things that you, the demons, tell you, you think you have an option for, you know. This gal on TV, that movie star, this one. Look at all these incredible images. What are you doing hanging around this idiot? <laughs> you could be expanding your horizons. Look at these people. They're all having fun. See, we didn't have that when I was a kid. I walk in the room. I would adjust the antenna on the black and white thing, looking for Lucy. Ricky's in his bed, fully dressed. L Lucy's in her bed. She fully dressed. Okay? Not anymore. It's foo, 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 foo. How do kids grow up now? They're all infected with spirits. You see kids coming in here with demons all the time. Why? Technology. So the devil's telling you, listen, this person you're married with, they're boring. You are the most exciting thing I've ever seen. Why don't you go find somebody as exciting as you are? Okay, so if you want a real evaluation on that, why there's one of my cards is in the back. You can come in and I'll give you an excitement evaluation. <laughs> Unfortunately, you're not going to like what you hear. Stay married. And then, of course, on the list now, which never was there even 10 years ago, is pornography because one of the spouses senses that that's cheating. Could be a chat room, could be some goddess on vivid or something whatever it is and they feel that that, that your your no your heart's no longer here with me you're you've got this gal on the internet and you're soaked into her and and that's it you're cheating on me does that make sense i mean it's happening all over the country every marriage counselor in the on the country faces these issues every single day now we never did before i see it every week Something's happening in the home that wasn't happening years ago. Phone sex. Okay. Nobody had phone sex when I was a kid. Uh, you pick the phone up. And there's a long cord on it. The thing weighs about 14 pounds. Hello. If you, you couldn't understand them, it was a bad connection, so you hang up on it. That was a phone call when I was a kid. Not anymore. Hi, baby. Ooh, la, la. Who is this? Oh, you know who it is. Yeah, I know who it is. It's the gates of hell calling. And you're about to fall through them. <clears throat> Biblical divorce. Let's go into it. Are you ready? This is the tough part. Everybody, now take a big breath. Okay, grab your seat. I don't mean this seat. I mean, grab the seat that we have graciously provided you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, let's check out God's word on what divorce is. This is going to blow you away. Now, let's look at it quickly. Apeluo is the Greek word here, and it's used in this text here. Not here, of course. It's Deuteronomy 24 is the origin of divorce, so to speak. And uh, it's, it's uh, translated in the King James Bible as this, this word here, put away, or this word here, divorce. Okay? But apeluo means to... Uh, ship away, get rid of, dismiss, shuffle off, boot out, go. 
okay? In that order. And it's used in these verses about our subject matter right now. It means to dismiss someone, get rid of them. Go on. But it started here. Deuteronomy chapter 24. Moses taught them that if you got married and something happened on the wedding night, and it was erwah is the Hebrew word. It means something to do with her nudity. What was it? We don't know. That Hebrew word is not defined enough to figure it out. In the Septuagint, it's translated, this Hebrew word's translated something unseemly in her. What does that mean? I do not know. Could be scars, VD, uh, not a virgin. We're not sure. Okay? But anyway, we do know, we do know by definition, it is related to nudity on the wedding night. Okay? So then Moses said, write her a Yes, you have to make it official so she doesn't end up, you know, alone the rest of the rest of her life because as you know, the economy is bad now, but back then it was like the unemployment rate was 70%. Near 100% for women. So or their society totally different than ours. You can't just get a divorce and you go get a job and I'll keep my job. No, there's no jobs. So to have all these women in the community, you had to be officially divorced. Phew. Certificate. Wrote it up. Deuteronomy 22. Now we get more insight here. If you take a wife and something happens, you hate her, it says here, uh, and you bring an evil name against her, okay? So you get married on your wedding night. What? God, you nuts. I'm out of here. And you go to the neighbors. You go to, hey, this, she's this, 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 this. Okay? Uh, I took this woman and I found her. Here it is. Ready? Bathulim. A non-virgin. Okay? Now we're getting somewhere. So it looks like she was not a virgin, and that may not, not absolutely is. I'm not saying it is. It may be related to that other, other word. It may. I'm not, uh, I don't have all the answers. Then the father of the, of the girl takes her mother, and they take the tokens of her virginity, which were the sheet with the blood on it from the broken hymen during intercourse. And if they have that sheet, that's the evidence so you take it to trial. Okay? Now, we don't have those trials here in our society. Most of ours are like whiplash or something. There it's this blood on the sheets. You go to the elders and you say, hey, here's the story. Here's what happened. I gave my daughter to this guy. He paid me this. Okay? He wants this money back. He wants me to take her back. I want to keep this stuff, and I don't want her back. <laughs> and he went around and bad mouthing me. And whew, check it out. Whoa. They go to the jury pool. They come back uh, with a judgment against this man who falsely accused this man's daughter that he took the wife. He, blast, he blasted his family. And he wants her to take, take her back. I don't want her. And he lied about her. And they check it out. They spread the cloth out, it says. And then they shall chastise him, the husband. Okay? And they fine him. You had to take a fine for saying something negative about your wife and embarrassing her family tree. You're not allowed to do that in Israel. So you've got to be chastised and you've got to get fined. Right? And you brought a bad name on everybody. And on top of that, dude, you never get to divorce her. I don't care if she sleeps with the Green Bay Packers. <laughs> you stuck with her. Because you lied. Right. Is 
this material boring you? Could be me. You may not divorce her, period, ever again. And in Matthew 19, flipping forward 1,500 years, let's do this. The Pharisees came to Jesus, and they were kind of like our politicians now today and, and religious people. You ever met somebody that was religious? They lie all the time. They're phonies, they're farces, they're hypocrites, they're gutless, they're self-serving, they're money grubber, and uh, several other good qualities. It says the Pharisees, who were worse than religious people, these guys were gasping hypocrites, came to Jesus and they were testing him, trying to get him to say something stupid. Is it lawful for a man to apaluo, get, go, and release her, doesn't matter, for every cause? Every cause? They're tricking him. It is lawful to dismiss your wife by Moses' standards based on that criteria. If you provided that to her, that was already, and he knew that, they knew that. They were trying to get him to slip up. Jesus said, well, didn't you read about marriage? Here's what Jehovah said. Oh, we know Jehovah. What did he say? Genesis 2. He says, I made them male, I made them female, that's how I made them. There's not a third sex. It's males and females. Section one. Section two. This person leaves their family, and this person leaves their family, and they start a new family. They are proskalao, glued together. Glued means they become one. They're glued to one thing. If you glue something to something, it's one thing. That's why you glued it. They are now one. This is Jesus talking to these phony hypocrites. They're just one flesh. Now, so if God glues, if you glue them together and God says that's a glue, then you don't unglue the thing. You're not supposed to do that. Well, now they, the Pharisees, who are pathological liars, they switch their tactic now. He threw them a curveball, and they come back at him another angle, and they say, then why did Moses give her an apostasion? These documents, official, it's official. Why did he do that then, smarty? And tell them he could... Apaluo, send her away. Hey, I want you out of my house. Take these papers. Go. You find another idiot to marry. Get out of here. Moses said it was okay. For certain circumstances. Not for every cause. Oh, your feet stink. Here's the papers. Out. Oh, the cook, the porridge. Oh, you screwed up the porridge. No, that's not what he said. Moses said this. Why? Because you guys have hard hearts. You guys are cruel. You're brutal. You don't care. You got no compassion. You're self-centered. You're self-absorbed. You're stoops. So, what are we going to do? Have all these women running around Israel with no husbands, living in poverty, all turning to whoredom. What are we going to do? The system's going to crash. So Moses, because you've got hard hearts, set up this system to try and save the, the nation of Israel and keep all these people from roaming the streets worth nowhere to go. But it was never supposed to be that way, Jesus said. The way it was supposed to be was, there's a male, there's a female. I didn't make anything else. And they glue here. Now they are one. Now they have kids. Those kids grow up. They then leave their father and mother. And they glue to... I'm starting to start like Victor Borg on acid. Uh, you see, that's how the system God said. I set it up that way. But it was never set up this other way. That was a backup system I had to go to because you've got hard hearts. So I allowed it to work out that way. No. 
Now, Jesus drops a bomb on the planet Earth that nobody had ever heard before. And the only reason he could do that was because he was the same person that gave Moses the law on Mount Sinai. So he is the only person allowed to modify it. God gave Moses the law, and God modified it. And he modifies it here. Whoever shall, shall what? A paluo. Get cold. His wife. Except. There's an exception. What is it? It's more than you think. Do not. Jump up and say a negative word and run out of here. You just calm yourself down and stay there. Thank you. <laughs> Except for what? Pornea. That's fornication. Not just moikia. Adultery. What was that? Yeah. There are numerous reasons you can get divorced. It's fornication, not adultery. But if you divorce them, if you don't do it the right way, and you marry someone else, you are committing adultery. Moikia. What is that? We went over that last week. It's heterosexual sex. Heterosexual adultery is not homosexual. That's pornea. It's not pedophilia. That's pornea, fornication. Moikia is male, female. I see several people with saucers for eyes right now. Muikia is any type of heterosexual sin. So let's say, for example, uh, you go to a prostitute, and you're a male and she's a female. That's muikia. It is also pornea, fornication. Fornication, as we went over last week, covers every kind of sin, all sins. Sexual sins, excuse me, all sexual sin. I'm sorry. It's not murder, that's, a, that's not porn, uh, fornication. It's sexuality. That's our subject of our Bible study tonight. But the grounds for divorce are fornication, not adultery. Deeper. It's deeper and broader. So let's say, for example, you get divorced from your wife because she wouldn't stop her internet porn connection. Did he sin? You got divorced from your wife because she, he was on a chat room and he wouldn't get off of it. Her name was Sunny. Sunny, so nice. Sunny's ground for divorce. He never touched her. <laughs> Is it? Whoa. If you divorce somebody for, let's say, their feet stink, and they marry somebody else, even if you give them an apostasion, a written packet of divorcement, you are guilty committing adultery. What did you just say? You're not listening to me? If I divorce her for unbiblical grounds, her feet stink, and she marries this person, I'm guilty of their adultery. She's committing adultery. I'm guilty of it. Okay, 
Let's get off that quickly because I do want to get home tonight. And if you marry her that was you committed adultery. I didn't know her background. It doesn't matter. I brought her over here from Asia. I went over to, I don't care if you brought her home from a popcorn machine. If she was married to somebody else and was illegally divorced, you are an adulterer. There is no ignorant exception. Marriage counseling is very important. <laughs> Honey, where have you been? Now, all men cannot receive this saying. Okay? All men cannot receive this. Only to whom it is given. What's he talking about now? Yonix, right. Unikos is a Greek word. And it means to someone who has been Women have no idea what I'm talking about, but that, the thought of it, Whoa. leaves you Whoa. unable to move for a moment. <laughs> anyway, Manukas is a, to castrate. Some people are celibate, so to speak, Catholicism. From their, they were born that way. Some people have <laughs> congenital disabilities with their testicles or whatever it is, and they're born with whatever it is, and they're eunuchs. Some people, Jesus said, are made eunuchs, right? So you volunteer, let's say you wanted to work in a certain government job or king and queen palace or somewhere where there's a lot of women. They didn't want you to run the risk of committing adultery with their women, so you had to... Ouch. Oh, no, that's a, that's a very high unemployment rate. Most people are not going to make that kind of a sacrifice for a job. I mean, you can't even get uh, white people to do landscaping, let alone... Well, that's not going to happen. Do not stop these Mexicans from coming from Mexico. Please do not do that, because I got to I'm not doing my yard. Okay. Not at my age. Have some have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of God's sake. So some people voluntarily become what? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So if you're able to receive this one, that one, or this one, go ahead and receive it. I'm not telling you to do it. Huge. Matthew 5, he says, you've, you've heard you're not supposed to commit adultery. Of course, they all knew that by heart. They all had it all memorized. That's in Exodus 20. And he says, however, I'm telling you that this sin has been expanded. What? Yes. What right do you have to tell me that? I gave the law. I can modify it. Now it has to do with the lust of the eyes and the heart. If you just look over there to, that's the male. What's that mean? To have this stirring passion for this person. Okay? Does it have to be somebody you know? It doesn't say that. It could be a chat room, a porn actress, uh, a, somebody on TV, somebody on a sitcom, a movie star. It doesn't, hey, whatever. Your neighbor. doesn't matter. His looks. looks. You have to look at them. Yeah, okay, I'm looking at, ooh, la, la, there's Pamela Anderson. Ugh. What is that? Moikia, uh, it's adultery. I never met her. And she has no idea what she's missing. <laughs> it's adultery anyway. You don't get it. Is it are, you are getting it, aren't you? Yeah, sure you are. If you, you can now commit adultery in here, Never having met the person, he's saying. And it is muikia, heterosexual sexual activity. Now, if you put your wife away, you must give him a writing of divorcement, he says. But I say to you, if you put your wife away or break up your marriage for any cause other than what? Vacation. Not muikia, adultery. That's just not it. 
So all adultery is fornication. But not all fornication is adultery. Right? So if I'm a male and I'm dating a guy, I am not committing adultery. I'm fornicating. Why? The same sex. If I'm dating, let's say I'm a farmer and I'm dating a milk cow, I'm a pervert. Okay? What's that? Fornication. It's bestiality. It's not moikia. It doesn't matter what the sex of the cow is. This is a little too deep for you? I see that. I've, I went too far on that one. I, I'm gonna re I need to retract that. We're going to cut that out of the tape. If you marry someone who is sent away, shushed off, got rid of, divorced, booted out, whatever it is, you are committing... Adultery, muikia, that is heterosexual sex. So if you've got a girlfriend on the internet and you're a male, you can be committing adultery, never having touched that person in the eyes of God, and it's grounds for divorce. It doesn't say you have to do it. It doesn't say you have to divorce. I'm, and I would never recommend you get divorced. That's not my job as a counselor or a minister or whoever I am. That's not my job to tell you that. Okay? That's not my job. But it's saying you can do it. I'm not telling you to do it. You know, whenever people come to me, the first option, my first option is I try to put this thing back together. That's my mindset. But if there's legal grounds and I can't put the thing back, they're, they're legally allowed to move on. Hmm. All right, now I need to make one more point before I end this. Okay. Let's, let's put this all together for fun, okay? <laughs> all right, you, you get married here, right? And then you get divorced here. Get remarried again. Then you drop dead. <laughs> all right, now... What's going to happen to you on Judgment Day, assuming that you're not saved? This is an illustration involving unsaved people, right? So your neighbor, your friends, whoever, your coworkers, they're not saved, and they've had multiple marriages, let's say, okay, and then they drop dead. If this marriage here broke up over irreconcilable differences, when this man married her, he committed adultery. And on Judgment Day, here, he has to face the white throne judgment and give an account of being a, an adulterer, even though he was legally, in our society, married to that person. Because this marriage was unscriptural. And then he married that person. They're guilty of adultery. He's guilty of adultery. Moikia. Now let's say your wife dies here, and you get married again. Then you get divorced. Then you die. What happens to you on Judgment Day if you're, if you're not saved? Well, you have to give an account of your sexual history. Every person has to give an account of themselves to God in everything they do and say. Everything's being recorded, and nothing slips by the Holy Ghost. But if this person died, if this guy was married here and he got divorced for fornication, he remarried, that marriage was legitimate, she died, he remarried again, then they got divorced for irreconcilable differences, he then has to give account of adultery here for that marriage. If you're married and your spouse dies, that's not a sin. Paul explained that once they're dead, the contract ends and you can remarry. So he remarries here, but this gal here doesn't cook his toast right. 
So they get divorced here, then he kicks the bucket here. Oops, divorce, adultery. Sin, sinning. Now, if you're saved, let's, let's try it there. Let's try a saved person now. Here's where it gets bad, but then it gets good. So you're married here, and you're, bo you're born again. You get, no, let's say you're a sinner, hypothetically. You, you get married, you're a sinner, and then you get divorced. Let's say uh, for, because uh, you don't like the way she parts her hair. So you get divorced, or she's too fat. Get out of my house. Here's your papers. We're divorced. You remarry again. You get saved here, okay? What happened here? It's all washed. This, this is washed, that's washed, this, everything washed. The, the person is born again here, they're white as the driven snow. It's the precious blood of Christ. <laughs> it's just wonderful. Oops, the devil gets in, he says, you know what, you can do a lot better, you need a ministry wife, dump her. You get married again, oops, that's adultery. Correct? It's moikia. But before you died, you asked God to forgive you. You're forgiven. It's easy. It's a, this guy said it's easy. He's teaching next week. <laughs> You've been carrying around guilt for years. And nobody understands that divorce is a forgivable offense. There's only one sin not forgivable. It's too horrible to mention. Question. Divorce is a forgivable sin. Correct. Mm -hmm. He'll forgive you, but you got to. Can you get forgiven for multiple divorces when you know what you're doing? Yeah, but it all comes out of your thing on here. It's all settled up here, right here. Now, that's assuming the guy is sincere. Now, when she said, if you ask forgiveness, let's assume, I was assuming the guy was sincere. Let's say. You get divorced here, you get remarried, and man, this thing's going to hell in a handbasket. And so he leaves, she leaves, what happens? She, he remarries, he does sincerely apologize. Yeah, you're forgiven. If the guy is a professional con artist, and he's uh, Robert Tilton, marrying people and running, that's a different story. It's all adultery. The heart is what matters. So if you, if you get divorced and remarried here and you're born again and your wife or husband that you married, let's say moved to Hong Kong and married a Tibetan monk, you are not required by God to divorce this wife and go find that wife in Hong Kong, <laughs> hunt her down at a temple, kidnap her. No, that's all done. It's all settled up here at the judgment seat of Christ where you have to answer for your Christian life everything you ever said, everything you ever did. The sinners go to the white throne. We go to Christ's throne. And you're going to give an account of your life, period. Who you divorced, who you married, who you dated, what you said, what you were, everything. And that's where all, everything's all settled up. Yes, ma'am. Question back there. Okay, that's a risky situation because if he, are, are you married? Uh, well, hold on a minute, strike that. She just asked me kind of a complicated question. If you have, let's go back here for a second. If this person's married here, and are they, was he saved at the time? Yes. He was saved, and she was saved, correct? Okay, this, this person here, these two people are married, and they're both Christians. 
is what she's telling me, right? So uh, the wife receives a divine prophetic word at a, at a uh, prophetic <laughs> conference that says she's supposed to marry this missionary from Ukamunga and start a church there. So she says, well, i got to bag this loser. So she f runs off with prophetic minister A. Now this guy here wants to marry again. Can he get married again? Can he, yeah, this woman here, she's committing adultery. This gal here, she's an adulterer. What's that? Yeah, it doesn't matter. I just, I'm just using it because I don't, I don't want to keep talking uh, male and female stuff. But anyway, you know what I'm talking about. If this person leaves, male or female, it doesn't matter, and they run off with the prophetic guy here, you know, can this person remarry? Well, that's adultery. Muikia. That's grounds for divorce. If he ran off with the neighbor's goat, that's grounds for divorce. That would be fornication. Correct. Right? So you can get legally divorced for fornication, which expands it to God only knows what sin you're involved in. I do because you come in to see me. <laughs> but I'm not going through it here. It's ugly in that office. You know, it's funny, 25 years ago when I was started out counseling, people tell me stuff about their lives, and I go, God dang, dude, you're sick. I'd be thinking it. But over the years, as I you know, kind of heard everything, and when I see God healed all these horrible, sinful people, and I see him just heal them right on the spot, and they get forgiven and blessed and filled with the Spirit right in front of my eyes, now you come in, it doesn't matter what you did. I'm just sitting there, oh, that's fine. <laughs> Have a seat, let's get healed. Nothing bothers me anymore. When I was younger, you know, I'd get a, one of them stories, peanut butter and <laughs> now it's like, oh, you peanut butter, jelly, oh, use, no problem, let's get healed. I don't even, I don't even flinch. My face doesn't even change. Before I, you kind of lean back in the chair. Whoa, this guy's sick. But experience and knowledge and compassion overcomes prejudice. Well, that's a good sermon there. Steal that one and preach that, son. All right, so she, that, that guy could get remarried because she ran off with this other guy. Muikia, right? All right. If, if, they, if that wasn't the case, you know, I'd, if she came in to see me in counseling, I would say, oh, whoa, let's hold off here. Let's think about this here. Now, he doesn't like her shoes, she didn't like those kind of shirts. This don't smell good. This looks like adultery. This guy is probably not somebody you want to marry anyway, spiritually. Let's skip the marriage stuff. This guy's got serious spiritual problems. He's probably infected anyway. So my recommendation would put a time out on that dude. But if it's sincere and she runs off, hey, that's it wasn't his fault. She ran off with some guy. What, what if he caused her to run off? The way for her to run off and then said, okay, well, she's off now. That happens a lot. What if he, he, asked, he asked me, what if, what if he causes the divorce kind of indirectly? See, that, that happens with the beating wives and stuff. You, you're, you're so abusive to the person that they run off and they're so emotionally distraught and crushed that they, quote, fall into the arms of another Man, okay? Yeah, he has to give a, if he's saved, if he's saved, then he's here, and then he has to give an account of that. Sin for abusing your wife. That's a sin, to abuse your wife. In fact, in Ephesians 5, the Bible says, men are in much bigger trouble than females in the marriage relationship because the responsibility lies more with the males than the females. Sorry, guys. This part's vomitous, but it's actually true. The Bible says if you abuse or hurt your wife, your prayers are hindered. Yeah. That means you're praying and your prayers are not getting through because you're hurting her. Whoa. What do you need to do? Fix that first and then go pray. 
So your prayers will get through. Ephesians 5. It doesn't say that about the woman. It says about the man, the husband. The husband's the spiritual head of the home. Correct? Like the Trinity. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Nobody's better than anybody. There's just an order to it. Nobody in the home is better than anybody. Father, mother, kids. And it's that structure there. Once you bastardize that structure, the home disintegrates. Once you... The male leaves, the woman's running the home. Horrible. That's not God's plan. There's an order to the family. There's an order to the Trinity. And you don't violate it. If you do, you're handling your life to the demons. Yes, sir? Okay, this gentleman over here asked me an interesting question. It's a little odd, a very odd question, but what he said was, my wife left me. Are you divorced? You divorced your wife because she had a, quote, what? Well, why did you divorce her then? Right? It went, it went bad. Yeah, all soul tie marriages end up divorced 50, 50 something percent. Now, I still don't understand this question, but I'm going to pretend I do. What he's saying is um, I divorced my wife because she had an inappropriate relationship with this man at work, is what he basically said. So I'm just going to have to fill in the blanks here. If he divorced her, he suspected there was some type of pornea going on there, fornication, okay? Then he said he thought she had a soul tie with him. Now, if that was a sexual soul tie, then there would, and he's the opposite sex, and that would be muikia or adultery, okay? So then that would legally give him the right to get divorced if it was related to fornication. So, however, if they were getting divorced if she was I don't know running an illegal poker tournament at work or something and he doesn't like poker and he's say hey you're out of here I don't play that game now that's a horse of a different color way deeper than that was it related to some type of sexuality She married somebody else. Okay. Oh, she's remarried. So, okay, I can't really uh, completely, totally answer the guy's question because I don't have enough facts. But it sounds like, I'm saying it sounds like, not saying for sure. She ran off with this guy, then they got remarried. That's a, she committed adultery on him. It sounds like he could legally remarry. Oh, it sounds like that. I don't, don't, don't quote me on that because I don't have enough facts. But it sounds like he would legally, in God's eyes, be allowed to get married. Okay? But if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. That means no matter what he did, no matter what he thought, he can be cleansed and healed today. And he can forgive her and release her and her wounds and her demons out of his soul and he can be healed and cleansed tonight. Got out of that one. See, that's called getting out of stuff. 
Okay, now, what, what's the point of this exercise? I'm trying to get you to see that, I'm going to quit here. I'm trying to get you to see that if you're carrying around guilt over a divorce, it may be demonic guilt, and it's not real. You may have, in fact, divorced the person in the eyes of God for legitimate reasons, and the demons came along and heaped condemnation on you, trying to get you down, when in fact you never were down. Because pornea is a vast area of sexual activity. And adultery can be committed. What's the moral of this story? Forgive yourself and just receive your destiny. You're supposed to have your anointing and your healing gifts now. And you've been running yourself down. You're going to stop it tonight. Amen. You're going to forgive yourself. Amen. You're going to release it. <laughs> yes. Yes, you are. Because God wants you to. He likes you. He wants to help you. All right, that'll do it then. <laughs> now, uh, does anybody have any bad feelings about me? Only one person. All right, but that person, I've, I know her, and that, does, that doesn't count. Now, what does any uh, legitimate person have any? Okay. Now, this is a touchy subject with divorce. If you're a Baptist or you're a legalistic type person or you're from the old Pentecostal holiness, you're going to freak out understanding these Greek words. You're not going to get it. You're just going to run out the door and pull your hair out. But the reason I explain this this way is because the Greek text explains it crystal clear. The English translations have been bastardized, and nobody really understands what Jesus was saying. The point I was trying to make on all this was sexual sin is extremely serious in the eyes of God, and it draws in powerful, unclean spirits of sexual perversion. If you're engaged in sexual activities, you better stop it fast. You play with the devil, he will crush you. Amen. Yeah. Right. He won't give you a second chance. And he cheats. You give him an inch, he'll take a mile. Paul said, do not give place. Tapas, that means area or geography. Do not give any place to the devil. And if you are committing any form of fornication, any form, Casual, magazines, internet porn, chat room, flirting. If you're fornicating in any way, my recommendation is that you repent tonight and get healed. Because fornication draws in monsters. I, was, I fornicated for years when I was living in sin and was massively infected with demons. I was a very sick person. Why? Because I was sinning. Sinning is not good. But you, here, this discipleship program, you're stopping sinning. See? And you're not just stopping it because your Baptist grandmother yelled at you. You're doing it because you love God. And you've got a heart for the Lord. And you're supposed to have your anointing. You've got a God-given call on your life. You've got the anointing of the Holy Ghost. You're not supposed to sit there anymore and have it plugged up while everybody in your neighborhood drops dead and goes to hell. No! You're supposed to be an anointed fighter in the kingdom of God. Amen. Well, that sermon will preach too. Go on and take it. All right, that's it. We don't have any more questions. We're going to close in uh, prayer and in, we're going to give you a five-minute break. And if you are carrying guilt over a divorce or something, or you feel like you may be oppressed by evil spirits, or you've got a lust problem and you can't get over it, tonight's the night to get healed. We're going to pray for you, and God's going to drive those demons out of your mind and your body and out of your life. <laughs>